all the blood nearly drained from his face when he saw Vicky suddenly approach the front of the hospital bed, grinning innocently at him with her nice persona. At that moment, Timmy looked locked eyes with that evil woman. The blue coloration of his eyes turned out into blood red with pure hatred and rage, and he began trembling as well. Just the sight of Vicky alone filled Timmy with the level of rage that he had never thought even existed, and his exper expression changed from Match's rage before anyone could even stop him. Timmy suddenly lunged at Vicky like an arranged bull elephant going for the kill, causing its IV needle to fly out of his hand and slightly rip the flesh in the process. However, he felt no pain from it due to being pumped up on painkillers. You monstrous beast! I'll kill you! Timmy thundered, landing on Vicky and tackling her to the ground. Then he began beating her, clawing at her, and even ravaging her like a rabid beast. Vicky attempted to raise one of her hands to push Timmy off, but he violently slammed his fist into her forearm so hard that it actually caused the bone to break with a sickening crunch. Vicky screamed in pain upon hearing the forearm break, but Vicky wasn't even done. But Timmy wasn't even done on with her. He violently punched her face and scratched it again and again. With the expression of pure hatred, rage, and even blood first, Timmy let his rage flow, wanting nothing more to inflict as much pain, an agony that spawned over evil, and all the pain and suffering that she had caused him in so many ways and others in the past. The memories of what happened in the surgery room flashed in Timmy's mind again and again with every strike he landed upon Vicky. This only made this first of revenge even stronger. You monster! You put me through much hell in there! I suffered there! Worse than any other pain in my life because of you! I've had it with you! You evil, heartless monster! You've made my life and everyone else's life a living nightmare! You're done! You're finished! Dead! Timmy raged as, she, as he punched Vicky so hard in the jaw, breaking several of her teeth in the process. Vicky only yelled in pain as Timmy slashed her across the face with his fingernails, grazing her left eye in the process while showering the blood to hit Timmy's face. You like that, huh? That feel good? I thought you liked causing pain. Doesn't it feel so good be receiving it, doesn't it? Who's the twerp now, Vicky? Timmy then howled as he began ravaging like Vicky, like a ferocity of an arranged honey badger. Vicky managed to actually push Timmy off of her with her other arm, but he quickly jumped back on her and tackled her to the floor again. He opened his mouth wide and did something that no one saw him coming. Before the doctors or his parents could stop him, Timmy bit down on the back of Vicky's neck, with a force stronger than ever before and ripped off a huge chunk of flesh from it, spat it out of his mouth, causing a huge fountain of blood to spray all over him. Coating his body in the hospital gown in a bright crimson, Vicky screamed in pure agony as blood poured out everywhere. At this point, Vicky began for mercy and screamed at Timmy to stop, but he wasn't have any of it. Did you ever show me mercy? Did you ever? Did you? How about you, Tutti, your brothers, and so many others? You show none of the mercy. You didn't even deserve it, Timmy thundered, striking Vicky with his fists again. Just then, Timmy felt someone grab him by the shoulder, yelling at him to stop. In the heat of rage, Timmy wasn't even thinking straight, so he quickly swung around and punched the person in the face. Upon seeing who it was, though, Timmy instantly knew the blood turned to ice. It turns out that the person he had just struck had to be none other than his mother. She had just jumped back, moaning in pain as she clutched her right eye. Timmy felt his rage suddenly turned out into fear and concern. Upon seeing that he had unwillingly punched his own mother in the eye. At that moment, Timmy glanced back at Vicky, then at himself now covered in blood. He felt tears brimming in his eyes when he realized what he had just done. Vicky convulsed and she gripped, grabbed the back of her neck with both hands, despite having a broken forearm, in an attempt to stop the blood from pouring out. But the wound was just too big and just kept coming. Vicky's green shirt was almost completely soaked in blood at this point and she can only do a cold whimper and mumble as she continued to lose more and more blood. The adrenaline in Timmy's system had worn off at this point, and he now felt the fear and dread, not just for punching his mother, but also fear what would happen if Vicky actually died from her injuries. As much as 
Timmy hated her for everything that she had done to him. He was still very unsettled over the fact that he almost killed Vicky. Even though deep down he wanted her gone. Just then, he was suddenly grabbed by two hospital security guards, who was then called in by the doctors to pull away from Vicky. The head surgeon glared at Timmy angrily as the two doctors suddenly wheeled the stretcher into the room and moved in next to Vicky. Get her to the ER now. She's losing a lot of blood, the surgeon commanded, turning back to Timmy. And as for you, boy, you're in a heap of trouble. Timmy's parents looked at their son as the security guards forced them back to the hospital bed. The two nurses began attaching some restraining belts to the side of the rails of the bed while the guards restrained Timmy. Mr. and Mrs. Turner's expressions were a mixture of sadness, confusion, shock, and f or even fear even, seeing their son just snap violently like he just did. Timmy, what the hell could you have possibly been thinking? Miss Turner exclaimed in horror, with tears flowing down her face from her right and now, now swollen. Have you lost your senses completely? Mr. Turner command demanded in shock. Timmy said nothing as the security guards handcuffed his wrist in the restraint belts, not even bothering to resist. He was too upset, shocked, and devoid of all hopes to say anything. Timmy simply just let the tears in his eyes flow as the guards fully locked the handcuffs in place. He then let finally go of him, and Vicky had now been placed onto a stretcher with a large thick cloth tied to the back of her neck to stop the bleeding vein and blood from spilling out. For a brief moment, Tim Vicky even turned her head and looked an eye on Vicky. Um, Timmy was blue eyes. He looked, causing him to simply glare back at her with hatred in his eyes. Right before she was wheeled out of the room, Timmy could only sworn he had, he saw actual fear in her eyes, but he didn't care. Timmy just felt satisfied, even though he had at least gotten a brief chance to chase Vicky some pain. He knew that someone hadn't stopped him. He may have certainly end up killing her. That was the thought of dread that terrified Timmy the most. Although he had been desired to kill Vicky when experiencing that horrible surgery and agony of being operated while awake, Timmy knew deep down that he'd actually gone through it and it killed her. He'd be far worse than Vicky would have ever have. Timmy could have been in all of Dimsdale as a murderer, a killer if he had to live the guilt for the rest of his life knowing that blood would forever be on his hands. Not to mention that Timmy would also lose his friends, and possibly even Cosmo and Wanda, if he had actually killed Vicky. In a very strange and ironic way, Timmy was actually glad that those guards stopped him before he could attack Vicky any further. I- I'm sorry, Timmy whimpered bird softly as the guards stepped away from his bed. Timmy simply lowered his head, began sobbing quietly, and uncontrollably, feeling the enormous amount of regret over ever just done. Not only did he ravage Vicky like a crazy, bloodthirsty animal, but in the heat of the moment, Timmy had been struck with his mother across the right eye, which had caused it to swell up. This was the only one thing that Timmy had felt guilty the most. He honestly didn't care that Vicky was in pain, but his mother didn't deserve it. As naive as his mother actually was, she was actually very sweet towards Timmy, and she had given her a black eye. This realization made Timmy feel worse. I... I didn't mean it! Timmy muttered softly, as he sobbed uncontrollably, his tears falling upon now his blood-drenched hospital gown. Cosmo and Wanda also began sobbing silently. They had just witnessed everything Timmy had done. They couldn't blame him for any of it. As cruel as it was... Cosmo and Wanda actually didn't care that Timmy ravaged Vicky the way he did. Not after putting that poor boy through so much agony and torture in the surgery room. They knew for a fact that they, they didn't mean to strike at his mother. Timmy was also pumped for his adrenaline, fueled rage, and that he ended up striking his mother by mistake. Timmy? Wanda and whimpered softly. We've got to do something to help him, Wanda, Cosmo insisted. Wiping tears from his face. Not with the adults around, we can't. Wanda snapped. You know that, Cosmo. You will know what happened if they'll see us. I know, but... Cosmo paused, peeking out from behind the bed that Timmy was still sobbing. The poor kid's been through so much torture. First he wakes up during the surgery, and now ends up feeling the, feeling the doctors operating on him. Then he finds out what Vicky was behind it all. 
I wouldn't be surprised if he actually went completely insane at this point. I know, I know, Wanda replied through her tears. We'll comfort Timmy all once the adults are gone. I'm worried about Vicky harming Timmy as well, Cosmo said. I know Timmy grazed up at her good, but what if she comes here after hours and tries to retaliate? I highly doubt that she will do that, Wanda replied. I honestly don't even think she's going to want to bother with Timmy again. Not after what he did to her. She'll probably end up trying to avoid him from him from now on, no doubt. Also, what the security staff said, hopefully they would look into the security footage that you recorded later on. Once that happens, Timmy's parents will find out that Timmy was telling the truth. Yes, and I'm praying that if they see it. However, if for some reason they don't, I'll give, have the evidence back up in my wand. Cosmo said, tapping the magic wand. If the hospital security doesn't see it, then I'll send it to Timmy's parents on their cell phones. And once they get a good look at it, they'll have the cops swarm in Vicky's hospital room in no time. Good, Wanda said, glancing back at Timmy. For too long, Timmy had to suffer at Vicky's hands. His parents were too naive to even notice or believe it when he confessed it to them. But now we'll finally have the chance to bring them some justice. They both looked back up at Timmy. His mother approached him, but his father just simply stood near the end of the bed, staring at Timmy in shock. In shock after everything that he has just done. As soon as the head surgeon and just two nurses, they began to explain everything that had just happened to the security guards and advised them to keep a close eye on Timmy. Timmy's mother then placed her hand on his shoulder and spoke calmly as she could to him. Timmy, she said. Timmy then just looked up with her with tears running down his face, with his expression filled with sadness and guilt. Mom, um, I, I didn't mean to. Timmy paused, glancing at his mother's swollen eye. I know, sweetie, Mrs. Turner said gently, rubbing his shoulder. But you shouldn't have. Why? Timmy suddenly yelled. Mrs. Turner backed away a bit, slightly startled from all of the sudden outburst, but still remained calm. Why that, honey? She asked. Why don't you believe me what I say about Vicky? I swear I'm not lying, Timmy yelled. She sabotaged my secure surgery and treating me like trash all the time in the past but you never believed in me you are so blind that you can't see how evil she is timmy you need to stop this right now mr turner suddenly snapped you're already enough trouble as it is for doing so what you just did to vicky and trying to accuse her of doing something that you'll have no psychological proof of is making this worse for you honey stop timmy's been through enough horror in such a one day and you know what? Maybe we should consider taking Timmy seriously for once. Miss Turner finally snapped. What? How could you even say that? We have no proof Vicky actually actually doing what Timmy did for she did. Mr. Turner shot back. Well, there's an obvious reason why Timmy lashed out at Vicky so violently like that. And he literally tore a hole in the back of her neck with his teeth for God's sake. He wouldn't even do that without a good reason. Miss Turner snapped. Before Timmy's father could respond, he heard the surgeon approach with a stern expression. Mr. and Mrs. Turner, regardless of the reason your son had just badly assaulted another person, he may have killed them and had security not arrive sooner. We understand that what had happened to Timmy in the surgery room was beyond horrible, but just as he said what did was deadly serious. The surgeon began in a serious tone, then glanced over at Timmy. As of right now, your son will be under constant watch by the hospital security until he's discharged from the hospital. We will also be notifying the police around about this once they arrive. What? You're going to have Timmy arrested? Mr. Miss Turner gasped and shocked. No, but there's a good chance that Vicky may press charges against your son for what he did to her. And honestly, it wouldn't surprise me. However, because of the new psychologically unstable Timmy is right now, he will remain cuffed to the bed for his own safety and Vicky's safety. Now, I don't even know why he did that, but given the insistence that your son was about to somehow be involved in sabotaging the surgical equipment, we'll question her about this as well. The surgeon explained, I am truly sorry that things have been this way, but we can't risk having your son snapping and turning violent like he just did. Timmy will only be allowed out of his, his bindings to use the restroom. I will be assigning two security guards to stand watch outside of the room at night, in case if he ever tries getting out of his restraints. 
I promise you enough that no matter regarding this biotch surgery, this will be dealt with the best we can. Until then, Timmy will have to stay restrained like this. I'm sorry, but this is for your own go his own good. Now if you excuse me, me and my other nurses I need to go examine Vicky to learn the extent of her injuries your son inflicted on her. Also, we'll send someone to give some clean hospital gown in a few minutes. And with that said, the head surgeon and his nurses left the room, leaving Vicky alone, Timmy alone with his parents. His fairy godparents were just still hiding under the bed. The two security guards watched outside of the recovery room, as ordered by the surgeon, leaving the door open just a crack in case of something went down in case they needed to hear. Meanwhile, in the security office, the hospital security chief was hard at work, monitoring and securing the cameras were also chomping at the donut. Just as they witnessed Timmy going for the psycho on Vicky, one of the live security feeds had quickly been sent to the security guards, down to the recovery room to deal with the situation. The security chief rarely gets out to see any action other than this once in a while, so as to see a Lacey and be able to enjoy it. While it lasted, the rest of his job was just boring as ever. However, today was a little different. The security chief had just recently been received a disturbing piece of information from one of the surgeons regarding the fact that an act of sabotage have somehow in the medical machinery was in one of the machinery rooms, causing a child to wake up in the middle of the surgery and pretty much end up feeling everything being done to him throughout it all. The chief then made it his mission and half it to follow fellow security guards locate and catch the sabotager. Man, I can't imagine what that poor kid must have gone through, the security chief muttered. I hope the sabotager gets caught. He continued to gaze at the many computer screens lined up on the wall, showing various live feeds of every security camera in the hospital, each HD quality of the video. The security chief had just been scanning around the recordings for any possible evidence that may have led him to catching the sabotager. But there was only one big problem. No security camera was, was mounted in the, the hall outside the security room. That meant catching the persons behind the unspeakable would be much harder to catch about than he thought. As the security chief scanned the camera, he suddenly received a security notification from the main computer which plunged his attention. Curious, he checked the notification and found it that a recent security recording detected an unknown source. Hmm, an unknown source? I better check this out. The security chief mumbled, then tapped the playback button to see what was this recording was. When the chief saw it, he immediately grew confused and concerned as well as he saw the area of recording that had been sent from. It was from a security camera mounted outside of surgery room number one. It was completely labeled as Cosmocam 1. Cosmocam? Never heard of that security camera with some bright same, and I don't even remember a security camera mounted in that area of the hallway. The security chief said, scratching his head, and who's this teenage girl with the green shirt? She doesn't look like the hospital staff remember I know of. As he began to plane back the footage, it showed the teenage girl laughing sadistically, even gloating to herself about something, but the chief couldn't make it out what she said as the volume was turned down. He turned it up and played the footage again. Again. And, of course, of what he heard greatly disturbed him. The chief had heard and saw the teenage girl laughing softly to herself in a very sarcastic, evil manner. And it was enough to hear her say that that really got his attention. I hope you enjoy watching your own guts getting ripped out, you little twerp. Cry all you want, but you ain't going anywhere. At least I was kind of enough to assure you that it will only wake up and be paralyzed and not feel anything. The teenage girl said in a very clear voice. She then continued to laugh and taunt at whoever she was looking at through the window leading to the surgery room. That is, until the sounding alarm could be heard in the background, the green shirt girl quickly ran off and screamed and as the footage ended. The security chief quickly grabbed his desk phone and called up the police. They had already notified earlier about the incident in the sur surgery room that would soon be arriving to investigate. But this soon new set of evidence could possibly help out the staff catch the sabotager. Once the police picked up the phone, 
The security chief then informed them about just the received the new evidence on the security cameras that suspected about being the sabotager. Afterwards, he then contacted his fellow security guards and updated them on the situation, then advised them to be on the lookout as a teenage girl with orange hair and green shirt. At the same time, Vicky was currently being treated by none other than the doctors in one of the hospital room, one floor up from the recovery room. Her broken forehead had just put in the cast, and her left eye had been covered with an eye patch. Vicky had been regrettably informed that she was now permanently blind in her left eye due to how deep it had been slashed. Five of Vicky's permanent teeth had also been shattered and broken beyond repair. That would meant that she would require self-dental implants to replace them. And as for deep wound be in her neck, well, this was going to be the worst part. Timmy has severed a large artery in the spot where he bit off the skin and flesh, causing Vicky to lose a dangerous amount of blood to the point where she could have required a blood transfusion. All as one of his major skin grafts to repair the damage that had been done to her neck. Vicky moaned as the doctors cleaned the scratch wounds and the cotton swabs and covered in alcohol. Feeling the sharp sting of pain as the swabs made contact with her wounds, Vicky reflected on what had happened back in the recovery room and made her spine tingle to everything she just did. Vicky already suspected that Timmy would react angrily towards her, and at that moment he saw her, but she had no idea that he'd probably go completely insane and attack like some rabid animal. There was also something that deeply troubled Vicky, and in the heat of that moment, Timmy said that he had suffered the worst pain of his life because of her prank, and this made Vicky realize in the horror that Timmy may in fact hit everything during his surgery while he was awake. No, he shouldn't have felt a thing. Those medications that paralyzed him were supposed to stop the pain, weren't they? Vicky fought in a panic. She did have her done her research incorrectly. There was sure something she missed. It was clear that Vicky did indeed miss something. Why else would Timmy attack her with such ferocity? She didn't even even have time to process the thought before the hospital security guards entered the room, compared, accompanied by one of the surgeons. The chief doctor was treating her wounds, turned to the face with a confused look on her face, just as one of the security guards pointed at Vicky and said, Yeah, it's her. She's the one the chief saw on the cameras. Excuse me, but what's going on? The doctor treated Vicky asked. Doc, that young lady right there had been suspected of being involved in some serious act of sabotaging in the security room number one. She'll need to be detained until the police arrive, the security guard informed them. As soon as Vicky heard that, she felt her blood turn to ice. How was this possible? Was someone watching her the whole time? Had someone in the security room spotted her outside of the window? It didn't matter though. Regardless of the reason... Vicky had somehow been caught, and there was nothing she could do about it. However, Vicky's pride then got the better of her, and she couldn't help but try to lie out of her way, like she had so many times in the past with Timmy's parents. But what are you talking about? I didn't do anything, Vicky snapped, in a slur voice due to her broken teeth. Yeah, right. One of the security guards snapped and then fetched some distraining cuffs from his belt and grabbed Vicky's left wrist. You call sabotaging a child's surgery... Read nothing? Me and my partner saw the security footage of you literally confessing your actions out loud yourself. So don't try playing any games with me. Vicky's single eye whined in shock, and she didn't recall seeing any security camera that were outside the surgery room one. How was that something like that even possible? How the hell was I caught on camera if there wasn't any down there? What the hell is even going on? Vicky fought as pure dead dread and both her wrists were cuffed to the hospital bed. Wait a minute, you are referring to that blotched surgery and the other doctors and nurses telling me about? The doctor treating Vicky asked in shock. Yes, and we have every reason to believe that she's the one behind it. The security chief wants her secured and confined at this hospital room until the police arrive, so we'll be informing the parents of the child who she said victim blotched his surgery. The second security guard replied, the doctor glanced at Vicky, now appeared to be sweating fearfully, then turned back to the security guards. I'll still need to finish treating her, but what if I said it's true? 
I'll make sure the other doctors and nurses know why she'd been restrained. The other doctor assured them. You don't have to worry about that, the first security guard replied. Our chief is already informing the rest of the staff about the security footage. And at this point, the whole hospital is probably going to know about it soon enough.